Hello my fellow riders, today we're going to be looking at the Lexmoto Cypher 50cc electric equivalent. Now as you've seen over the last couple of weeks we have been doing uh, some videos on the whole electronic range from Lexmoto. Uh, this is the full full video for the Lexmoto Cypher. So we're going to do this the same way we normally do, spec, design, comfort and cost of riding, plus the pros and cons. This bike is uh, a 50cc equivalent electric motorbike and it comes in at 1500 watts on a controller. It is a mid-drive motor. Quite a lot of the other electric scooters are hub driven. This one is belt driven off of the uh, mid motor. It does have a large battery system that is available to take out. You can take it out. So, don't look at my shiny head. So this is the uh, integrated battery. You can take it out, it is a bit of a pain. Um, compared to some of the scooters, the scooters you can just lift it out of the center console and it's not too much problem. This one has a separate key which is here, unlocks it, you pull it out, you take off the uh, three cables. This one here is a power cable, this one is a charging cable and this one is a control cable. So you take all of those out and then it, you can pull it out. It is quite finicky and it is hard to do so I would suggest with this bike you just leave it in makes things a little bit easier but it does you can in theory take it off but i wouldn't recommend it so for a scooter or this type of bike it does come with the 12 inch wheels upside down forks mono rear shock and obviously no fuel this uh, has a 72 volt 26 amp hour battery and that's going to get you somewhere in the region of 40 miles. Now, depending on your weight, um, depending on what sort of roads you're using, hills, all that sort of stuff will affect your range and also the weather. So if it's cold, that will reduce your range as well. But all these things affect your range. Um, so take that into consideration. But they're saying on an average ride in good conditions, urban, um, and extra urban you should be getting about 40 miles out of this bike on a charge that takes about eight hours six to eight hours now the charge cycle on the battery it has 5,000 charge cycles and this is until the point where the batteries start to degradate and uh, you start to lose the max amount of output. So they guarantee the battery for 5,000 charges. So you should get that 40 miles for the duration of that. So on the uh, electric side, they do the, um, they work out the max output slightly different on electric bike compared to a um, petrol bike. On an electric bike, they do it over a half an hour period, whereas on an electric bike, they do it over one data point. So it'd be peak output for one data point. So that means that in theory, on an electric bike, you should be able to get legally more power than you would on a petrol bike. So the way that this works is they put, you on, they put the bike on a dyno and they will do a peak power output on a petrol bike. So whatever the dyno says that is peak output, so it'll be in fourth gear is 6,000 revs at top speed and that will be the peak output on a on a geared bike, on a petrol bike. On an electric bike, what they do is they set it up with loads of sensors and stuff. They do an ha half an hour ride and then they work out with the restriction of the top speed, what the power output is required to keep it at that speed for that amount of time. And that would be how they work out the electric. On bikes like the Zero, um, their running output is 11.5 kilowatts of power, but their peak output is the equivalent of 59 horsepower. 
So it goes up 59 horsepower, loads of torque, loads of power, hits at 70, stops. There is no more power after 70 miles an hour because it just kills it. This one is much the same. So on a standard 125 motorbike, you're looking at about 10 newton meters of torque. This one is a 50 and it has 14.4 newton meters of torque, which means that if you're gonna use this on a um, camper van or something like that, it's really good because it's not gonna have a problem with two people. There's gonna be enough torque to take you up to 30 miles an hour with two people. Obviously this is gonna reduce your battery life, but this is what it is. So the bike is based on a Grom design. Uh, obviously the Honda Grom is not exactly the same, or the Ducati Monster, or that sort of thing. It is all plastic, but um, it's not cheap plastic. It, it seems like it is quite a good and sturdy plastic. Some of the older Chinese bikes used to come in with really tacky, really horrible plastic, but this is quite nice. Uh, the seat is also quite nicely made. It's nice and hard it's got it feels like it's like a memory foam sort of rubber in there and i think that's going to be comfortable for quite a long time as well tires will be like the uh cst which is the chinese manufactured tires uh they are all right they're they're, they're good tires i've never specifically had any problems with them myself people are saying that um in weather bad weather then they sometimes have a couple of issues with it but me personally, I've, I've ridden 5,000 of these in every type of weather that you can imagine. 5,000 of the wheels in every single different type of weather that you can imagine, and I've never had a problem. So that's me personally. Design um, with this one as well, you can't. Uh, go anywhere when the side stand is down and you do have to hold in the brake and press the P button to go anywhere. This bike um, also has a reverse button so that you can use a little bit of the power of the engine to push it backwards. On the dash it's got power, uh, miles per hour, odometer, how much torque, how much power you're taking out of the battery so it would be the equivalent to a rev counter but it's uh, an amp meter, it says. And it has temperature for the battery itself. That's not actually for the bike. It's just for the battery temperature. Because if they get too hot, they will just cut off. Uh, you get warning signs and all that sort of stuff. It'll cut off. Um, but if it's getting that hot, there's another issue. So These bikes are a little bit to get used to. Um, if you've ridden a bike before, then you're going to be looking for your brake pedal down here and your clutch lead, your clutch, uh, and your gear selector as well. You're going to be searching for all of those all the time. And it's a, it's a bit disconcerting until you get used to it. Once you get used to it, it's perfectly fine. And you're only going to have this issue if you rode bikes before. If you're coming off of your push bike and onto this, it's not really going to make any difference. It is pretty much a push bike that goes 30 miles an hour. Quickly. The uh, the mirrors are okay. I, I don't think this bike has been set up 100% yet. The, the handlebars are a little bit too far back, so they will be adjusted anyway. It does come with a hazard lights, but like all motorbikes, the hazard lights don't work unless the ignition's on. High beam, low beam, indicators, horn, and listen to her purr. I can't do it too much because it has got a lot and I will go through the metal door. So LED lights all the way around, that is a must on an electric bike because otherwise the, uh, the lights take up too much power. Um, it does actually have a USB charger port in the box here as well and I will show you that because it is quite a large space. You're not going to be able to fit your, um, your helmet in there but you are going to be able to fit your lunch. And it comes with a rather large charger.
Now let's talk about the pros and cons of having an electric bike. Now, the pros are, one, you get loads of torque. Uh, so it is gonna get off those lights really, really quickly. And you're gonna be able to get out and about away from the traffic before it pulls off because you will be able to out pull most of the things on the road. It's very comfortable. No back back rack is available for this at this time that may change in the future there is no way to uh, de-restrict this bike from what i understand and the app that's supposed to accompany this uh, motorbike isn't actually available in the uk yet but it is really comfortable really fast it will charge in eight hours you never have to pay tax you never have to pay f uh, that much for fuel to charge up this from zero to 100 percent is going to be around 35 pence i think it is so if you've got short journeys where you can either park your bike somewhere where you can get it charged off of a free pin socket um, or you you're just going 10 miles to work 10 miles back or 10 miles to wherever you're going and back then it's going to be really good the major downfall on an electric vehicle is the range if the range doesn't bother you, then it is a really, really good idea to go electric. They're a lot of fun. They're a lot more talky than anything else you're allowed to ride on a CBT. So why not? And they would be great for a motorhome as long as you've got a inverter that can produce the 13 amps required to charge it. When you come to buy this bike, you will be invoiced for £2,312.49 plus £75 on the road. You won't actually pay this though, you will pay £1,849.99p plus £100 on the road. Now the reason why it's um, invoiced at one price and paid at another is because you get a 20% olive grant for any electric vehicle over, I think it's £1,500. and um, which means that they will give you 20% back or we will not charge you 20% in the first place and we will claim the 20% back. If you decided that you didn't want the Olive Grant and you wanted to pay for it in full, you would have to pay the £2,312.49 plus £75 on the road. Insurance for this should be the same as any other motorbike, which is um, somewhere in the region of 350 to 700 pounds depending on a lot of different factors but yeah that, that's what it is no tax 35 pence to fill up the battery and obviously you have to pay for your boots your gloves your trousers and your helmet so thank you for watching my video on the Lexmoto Cypher 50cc equivalent motorbike these are available now and they have a limited amount of stock but they will be all, always getting new stock so if you've liked my video hit the thumbs up hit the thumbs down comment below or ask any questions and I will do my best to answer them as quickly as possible I answer every single comment that is put down below there will be a test ride video on this bike on Friday so check that out um, there will be a link somewhere on Friday so I will re-add it then and subscribe to my channel so up here we're going to do the um, overview of all of Lexmoto's uh, motorbikes so click on this link if you want to see that and click on the link down here for all the rest of my 50cc videos but hit that subscribe button here to stay updated to all my latest content but as always ride safe